All right, how's it going, everybody? It's Stevie Stroh, and I am going to be showing you something I uh, cobbled together last night with the help uh, of a few of my friends, but I am now on the road to discovery to using dry wire. And the dry wire that I am going to be using now is, uh, is a new and work in progress version of dry wire. It is the Python based version of dryer uh, by Michael Furman that's called Pi drive wire and I'm doing this for a number of reasons because it's something I haven't really done before I'm not quite as familiar with uh, I also want to kind of help Mikey um, test these things as he's working on them and I also have my own selfish reasons for needing to use drive wire right now as I'm getting more into development and I'd like to see how drive wire works with disk images between PCs and real Cocos and last but not least I have never BBS on a Coco and I've never tell nut BBS before and all the cool kids are doing it these days and they know how to do it but it's something I wanted to try and recently Mikey showed off um, uh, another program he's working on in conjunction with the Python DriveWire he's also working on a program called DW term or DriveWire terminal that will allow you to basically run an ANSI terminal on your Coco and not need to run OS 9. So this is the first time in my knowledge that a terminal program for the Coco that runs in regular disk basic or what they call RS DOS um, allows you to connect to a BBS over Telnet over DriveWire and not require OS 9 to do that. So that's kind of cool and so I wanted to try that. So here's all the pieces that we need to put this thing together. And the first thing I want to show you is that um, here's a picture of me getting all this together that I posted last night and we have a drive wire channel in discord so if you want to have conversations with people about drive wire matter of fact um, just the other day mr. Boise Pete um, jumped back on discord and he's here in the drive wire channel helping people out because Boise is one of the guys who helped develop drive wire so if you want to find out more about drive wire from people who actually know it other than me who doesn't know it uh, Discord is a great source for that. When you go to the DriveWire channel, if you double click the channel heading up here where it says DriveWire, there's a little pop up here that's got a lot of useful re reference information. Here's the DriveWire specifications. Here's where the DriveWire information can be found. Here's Aaron Wolf's DriveWire Foresight, Pi DriveWire, DW Term, definitions of the Bitbanger serial port, definitions of UART chips, definitions of polling. So there's a lot of cool reference links to DriveWire here in the DriveWire channel on Discord. What do you need to get all of this started? I am helping to test the um, self-contained binary for um, Pi DriveWire, for the Python DriveWire. It is based on Python and you you either have to set up Python yourself manually or Mikey has created uh, a Pi DriveWire binary that you can just unzip and run on your computer. So I am running from this link here, the Pi DriveWire for Windows. So when you extract that, you have a Pi DriveWire thing that you have to run from a command prompt to, to get uh, running and get loaded. There's also a manual that comes with it and I have the PDF manual up on the screen here to show you the basic command that I'm using to launch the Pi drive wire. Um, the one thing I had to do is um, because I'm using a USB serial adapter on my computer and I bought a cheap one, I bought the $10 one because I'm cheap. The one, the one weird thing about this USB adapter I have is that if you plug it and unplug it, it decides to magically pick a new COM port every time you plug it in. So the first time I tried this, I was on COM3. Today, it wants to be on COM4. So I just wanted to check my Windows device manager to see what port my USB serial adapter was on today it's now still on com, on com port 4. So with that in mind and using the manual here, I'm going to open up my command prompt and I'm going to type in the command here to launch it. So you start off by typing in pi drive wire and then there's a few things you do after that. So the, one of the things you want to do is you want to turn on the user interface. So it's dash dash UI dash port and then the port number he's recommended to run that on is port 6800. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to um, so you want to specify your user interface port. That's basically where what do you want your web server to run on? The next thing you want to do is you want to specify the port you're connected on. In my case, I'm on COM4. 
And then last thing you, and it's actually dash dash port, right? There's two dashes, dash dash port, com4. And then last but not least, you wanna do dash dash speed and tell it how fast you are going. I'm on a Coco 3 with a drive wire cable, so I'm gonna do 115 200, which is the um, 115K serial port. When I do that, that should launch the drive wire server on my computer and I'm now actually at a drive wire prompt and there's lots of drive wire commands you could type and run and of course I don't know any of them and I'm not a CLI kind of guy for the most part so now that I've launched that I'm gonna pull this up in my browser so I'm typing in localhost colon 6800 localhost is pointing to my own computer this thing is running on my computer as a web app on port 6800 and I've done that now and this is the web interface to Pi DriveWire running on my computer you can see here in its terminal window I'm getting some status output and it's even telling me that my HTTP um, has come up so it's showing me what it's doing now what do I want to do I want to mount and I could do it from a command line if I knew what the command was, but I'm not command savvy yet, I'm going to go ahead and mount um, the DW term disk in disk 4. I'm going to choose the file that I've stuck here in my DW folder. So DW term dot disk is here. Um, it is now showing me that DW term dot disk is here is mounted in drive 3. I can see that in my web GUI. And I can also see it in my status window here right now. It says dwterm.disk has basically been mounted. Here is my real Coco 3 being captured through the um, switcheroo cable and HDMI capture. And so now uh, I have the Coco SDC plugged in because even without an SD card, your Coco SDC adds drive wire extensions to regular disk basic. So if I just type in the word drive, I'm going to see that drive two and drive three are um, allocated to become drive wire uh, capable. And on my my user interface here, you can see that I mounted uh, the drive wire, the DW term disk, into drive wire drive three. Now the command to mount it, I've been told what to type, and I'm typing it. I don't fully understand all of the um, nomenclatures to the drives slots and instances that's a little bit over my head but for the sake of this I'm gonna say that I want to mount drive 3 to pound 3 which is slot 3 and then instance 0 because apparently you can have multiple disks that are chained to one slot the minute I do that what I've essentially done here to kind of put these things side by side DW term is mounted in drive 3 of drive wire I've now gone to my real Coco and told it to mount what's in drive three of my drive wire into drive three of my Coco. Are you following along here? And now if I type in drive three to switch to drive three and I type in dir, I should see what's on that disk image. So the beauty of drive wire is it lets you, among a million other things it does, it lets you mount disks and access disks over your serial cable. So I'm using the Coco SDC as my kind of conduit to DriveWire, but I'm not using an SD card. This disk image is on my computer and I'm loading it into my Coco over the serial cable. That is one of the many beautiful things of that DriveWire does. So now I want to load DW term and there's many different versions of DW term, but the one that I'm going to load DW term uh, is the one that takes advantage of the B for Bitbanger port in 63 for 6309, which is the processor I have in my Coco 3. I am going to load that over DriveWire. Not quite as fast as the Coco SDC, but still it works. And I'm going to exec that. And now this is my opening screen to DW term. It's asking me what mode I want to run in. For the sake of this demonstration, we're going to do Coco 3 80 by 24 ANSI. And now I am in um, DW term and I am in an 80 column screen, which is a little bit hard to see um, on this capture thing that I've got going on. Um, but the last thing I'm going to show you here is um, connecting to a Telnet 
BBS. So what I will tell you about DW term right now is it's still in beta. It's still being developed, meaning it's a work in progress. It's not final. There are many things to come, but it does support ANSI and it does support color. The limitations are it only supports eight color ANSI. So it's not the extended ANSI that I grew up on, on my Tandy 1000 with the 16 colors and all the cool blocks and, and squared outlines and all that kind of fancy stuff. So it's just text without the graphical symbols and it is only eight colors. Um, and so there are a lot of BBSs out there that have great splash screens, but they don't look quite as good right now on DW term because it doesn't um, it doesn't support those graphic characters uh, hopefully that might come in the future so I went to a website that's called Telnet BBS guide and I just started looking through BBS's that could um, work off of Telnet and I just wanted to find one that I could connect to to show you the completion of this Kind of test but also had a title screen that wouldn't look like hieroglyphs so the, one of the names that caught my attention was one that was called um, back to the future uh, so that's bttf back to the future bbs.com so how do you use um, dw term you use the old atd commands like if you remember back in the days on modems we would type in atdt for dial tone followed by the phone number and it would dial the phone number in this case here it's this atdt followed by the host name or ip address of the of the bbs in this case here it's back to the future BTTVS, um, BBS.com. And the one thing I've also noticed that I think has to happen is that a lot of these BBSs, they're not running on the default port. Where did that go? So a lot of these BBSs here will tell you, like this one here, this Bayou BBS, it's running on port 6401. So a lot of times you have to put a colon followed by the port number um, to get the Telnet protocol to communicate on these non-standard Telnet ports. The default port for Telnet is 23. Um, but even when it's running on 23, I think you still have to put colon 23 because I've tried it without it and, and I don't think it worked. There we go. So the minute I type that in and I hit connected, boom. Here is the logon screen being presented to me in brilliant ANSI color. Uh, back to uh, the future or back, yeah, back, whatever. I can't read it. It's a little bit dark for me. I'm looking at this on my PC on a flat panel, so it's not as bright as I think it would be like on a, on a CRT. Um, but to me, this is pretty cool because I have never done the whole Telnet BBS thing. I know a lot of people are doing it and they're doing it a lot of different ways. Um, but all I really wanted to show you right now was that, yes, you can connect to a Telnet BBS. And yes, you can do it on a Coco without needing to boot into OS 9. And you can do it over DriveWire. And getting DriveWire up and running is not terribly hard. Um, I'm a guy who hasn't done it. So I know there are a lot of people who have been using DriveWire for hundreds of years and there's a lot of knowledge out there and there's a lot of people that have been doing this and they do it every day. And that's great for those who, those who know DriveWire and those who do DriveWire, this is nothing new. This is literally like kindergarten level introduction to what DriveWire can do, which is where I personally need to start. But for as many people who know it and use it and live by it, I'm sure there's an even greater number of people who don't know, don't know the power of DriveWire, right? And so now that I am finding myself having a, a greater interest and even, dare I say, need to do certain things in DriveWire, and um, I'm going to start learning that, I will share my journey on what I'm learning and what I'm doing with other people like me who have no previous uh, experiences or strong understandings of what DriveWire is and what DriveWire does. And the good news is, is that there are a hundred people or more who will be happy to answer your questions and share their knowledge with you and help you get up and running. Like I had a few people help me last night when I got this thing off the ground. And one great way to do that is to go to our Discord server 
go to the drive wire channel under we have so many categories in discord it's disgusting but we have storage categories there is a networking category and under the networking category there's a drive wire channel and there are a lot of people in here with a lot of knowledge that would be more than happy to help you um accomplish whatever it is that you need with no judgment that concludes my demonstration and just to kind of put all the pieces together the three pieces to this puzzle right now are number one in the background window here i am running the drive wire uh, server it's an application that's running on my computer right now in this terminal window um, i have this this piece of software that's running has also generated this web interface that allows me to um, mount disks. I can pull up the console from here as well. If I wanted to type in drive wire commands here in the browser, I could. Here I can see what disk images are here. Here I can get to a console command and do my DW commands that I have no understanding of what those are. And then last but not least, in this window here, um, what I have is a real Coco, real hardware, um, plugged into a uh, drive wire cable, which is basically the, the serial cable that goes into the back of your Coco, which is that round connection. That then on the other end of the cable, it has the nine pin connection that goes to your traditional stereo uh, serial ports. And then from there, I have a USB based serial adapter plugged into my Windows PC that's allowing me to send this information over the serial cable from my PC to my real Coco. And the end result here is um, with DW term, I am now able to connect to a bulletin board system through the internet thanks to drive wire. Again, DW term is, is a work in progress. It's in beta. Um, if you want to do some serious terminal stuff out there, there are terminal programs that exist that have a much more fleshed out implementation of the anti ANSI uh, set. Twilight term from the Sock Masters, which is one of the first ones. I'm familiar with the program, but I never used it. Roger Taylor now has one called Netmate that Ron Delvo has been using that does a really good job of letting your Coco see these BBSs looking like more like the IBM character set would look and um, I'm sure more things will happen um, down the road for um, a Coco bulletin board ANSI terminal type stuff for me this was really just a proof of concept can I get it running can I get on a BBS the answer is yes here it is um, and look forward to more drive wire videos in the future OG Stevie Stroh saying have you drive wired today We'll see you next time, people. Bye-bye.